Hey, I'm Bodie Stroud, and this is my buddy Josh Welton from Brown Dog Welding. We're here at BS Industries, and today we're going to be showing you some techniques that I use on welding sheet metal, TIG welding sheet metal. Um, this is kind of a situation where I weld up like a door skin or a sensitive material real thin and you're worried about warpage. I'm going to try and show you how to use the heat to your advantage, hammer and dolly, and uh, without much warping. And I'm interested in it because I've got my uh, 1970 Buick Electra project that I'm working on and I have some rust repair on the fenders and some other little design features I want to add and I really haven't done much sheet metal welding so uh, I'm, I'm interested to see to see how Bodhi does it and to, to learn uh, learn some new techniques today. And I'm sure you'll pick it up just fine. I hope. I've seen what we'll a see. brilliant welder you are, big fan, so uh, yeah without uh, any more delay let's get started huh? So what I'm using here is some 20 gauge sheet metal and this is kind of the same as a door skin, a quarter panel, stuff like that. Right on. Uh, you know, and, and what I'll do is I'll use, I'm usually using like a, a 16th tungsten with uh, pretty close to whatever size sheet metal I'm using. Okay. Like right now though, I'm using an 045. So it just depends on what, yeah, it's close right. enough. It depends on what gaps you got, and, you know, and then I'll, I'll also set my machine at whatever amp, whatever size metal. If I'm using 035 sheet metal, I'll set it at 035. Okay. It's kind of a standard. At 35 amps? At 35 amps, yeah. Right on. So. Now do you, when, when you do stuff, uh, when you're not on a table where you have the nice heat sink, do you, do you use backing when you're, when you're welding like on a door panel that's, that's kind of already on a car? Or? Well, it's kind of just freehand. It's right whatever on. is, comfortable at that time or whatever the situation is, you know what I mean? Yep. Usually a door skin, if it, it needs a lot whatever. of repair, I'll drill out the spot welds, I'll pull the, pull the skin oh, okay. off, and I'll set it here on the table and I'll, I'll weld one. Awesome. Up. So, just depends on the damage, where it's at, and how to get to it. Gotcha. Yeah. So, basically, in a situation like this, I'll just find a, a starting point and I'll tack the two pieces of metal together. You know, I'll probably do like three small tacks. Okay. And what I do is I watch how the heat is affecting the metal. Because it you can't, I don't think there's anybody out there that can predict which no. way it's going to go. No, you've got to be able to kind of have a, <coughs> have a feel for the metal. You do. you got to have a feel for the metal. And I try to use the heat to my advantage. Right. And that is the best tip I can give people is using the heat to your advantage. Uh, I've seen guys do like an inch long bead and then they, they'll use their, their air blower and they call it speed cooling. Right. All you're doing is speed warping is what yeah, I call exactly. it. Yeah, I've never done it, I, I'm against it. Uh, I just try to use it at, as it, in the cooling process to my advantage. So basically you, you do a little bead and then you hammer it out. That's what I do. Right on. And it takes, it's time consuming, but you're gonna have less warpage uh, you know, Which means I've, straighter metal, less straighter bondo. metal. You know, because you're going to spend more time in the long run. Yeah. So this does take a lot of patience. You know, it takes a lot of trial and error to get here to where you start learning how the metal is going to work and okay. how to use it. Usually, if I put a bead down here and it raises, I'll put the dolly on the other end and I'll hammer the high side. Okay. And I'll just hammer it out until I can see I got a nice plane. You know field there or a nice straight field. Um, another thing I do is I don't grind the welds because when you're grinding a weld on something this more heat thin, added stress. more heat you're going to remove material and then that's when your weld gets away from you. Usually what I'll do on a door skin like this is after I'm done is I'll use a file. Oh wow, all yeah. right. So you can use a file and then sandpaper and you'd be amazed at how it disappears. Very cool. Yeah. I would have never thought that. That's, yeah. That's great. So I'll go ahead and do a little tack here to get started. Let's see if my rod's super long. So there, as you can see, it's left a nice tight seam because yeah. you want your seam as tight as possible. 
and you can see that it really didn't move much. I can see it did in the middle a little bit. So basically what I'll do is I'll just grab my hammer here and I'll kind of just and see how it kind of flattens yeah, the weld? Definitely. I got good penetration, good heat. The weld went through and it's gonna really bond the two pieces of metal. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell from the, from the camera view, but looking at this angle, it actually, one side was up and the, the hammering flattened it right out. So there you go. So you got, that's pretty much it. And then I'll just do the same thing down the line. Okay, so you, do you do small beads or you just tack the entire way? You know, me, since I'm kind of experienced at doing it, I'll do maybe a half inch bead at the most. Okay. Okay. And then I'll see how it's raised or what the metal's doing and I'll hammer it out. Um, you know, and then get you a just little skip bit around. And, and I skip around. I, I like it to where you take your glove off and you can touch it. Okay. You can literally touch these welds because it's cool it's enough down. so that, yeah. All right. Doesn't like heat. Metal doesn't like heat. It just not when you're trying to keep it straight. Not when you're trying to keep it straight. You're trying to do these old quarter panels or these door skins. It's just the it's the metals. You know, you don't have what was there initially from the factory. Right. After it's it's years thin down a bit. Of, yeah. Exactly. Especially you get it in some of the guys that acid dip their cars for weight savings. Acid and dip them, sandblast you're them. Yep. You you're you're removing mills of yeah. of material. So every little bit counts. Every little bit counts. That's why I say don't take a grinder to it. Take a file and you'll have a nice finished product. Okay, right on. As you're doing it, you got to watch and see. You want to keep your nice seam. You know what yeah. I mean? So you can see this. It'll is end up coming together, going apart. Yeah, exactly. So you just want to hold it down. And right now, I can hold this down. Oh, and okay. Without any filler rod, I can just tack these two right pieces. On. You know, I can. Yeah, you got a tight enough gap. Yeah. Then. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Keep that in place. Did you hear it move? Yep. You can see the whole. Yep. So that's what you know. Kind of that, yep. You're starting to move. So I can see that I need to. I'm going to hammer it on both sides. Yeah, that's I just awesome. keep going down the line and, and keeping that. that straight piece right of on. metal. Yeah. Can I give it a shot? Yeah, please do. Awesome. It's all yours. And I got it set at 30, uh, 30 right now, so you can just peg the pedal if you need to. I know right. you're used to kind of yeah, it at full speed. but I'll try it this way. Now, you would go through and kind of split the difference between each of these? Yeah, like what I would do, yeah. Now. I would move okay. to this one right now. All right. That's probably good. Now, just put the dolly on the back side of it. Pretty good. Yeah, there you go. Right good. on. And then you just kind of keep it. going yeah. through and just keep going through and just keep stitching it here and there. Awesome. Yeah, that's perfect. Pull your eyes out with the rod. I'm, I can see it. Ooh, I can feel it moving. <laughs> yeah. That's when you know you want to kind of stop. When I right. start feel of the metal, metal moving, I'll stop and then I'll do the hammer dolly process. That's it. Do you hammer just around the area or do you kind of? Yeah, I'll hammer around the area, you know, just fix. I'll start out on the, the weld, you know. And that's why um, I prefer TIG over MIG. You know, I spent yeah. many years doing MIG on sheet metal and zzz, zzz, zzz. Um, You have so much more was, control of the heat and the, how, how much you put into it. You do. You have more control, too. and you don't have high buildup on your weld. Right. You know oh, yeah, I mean? it's pretty flat. And, you, and, and then you, you can flatten it with the hammer. You see when you're hammering it, it's basically flattening it. So then when you want to smooth this weld out, it's literally sandpaper. Awesome. And it'll knock it down or a file. Very yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. And another thing we can do, we're using a Synchrowave 210, which has pulse on it. You can go up to 50, 50 pulses per second. So you can actually, I might actually try that, turn it up to 50, and... Uh, what you're doing is uh, 
you're still able to, to lay the metal in there, but you're putting uh, less overall heat into yep. the material. Yep. So, so that I'm gonna, works as well, too. Give it a little bit of a cooling period. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to set the machine up and try that. Cool, go for it. I'll wait right here. Speaking of being able to see. See, that's a pretty weld. Right on. There you go. You just keep the whole same process going and by the time you're done you'll have a nice flat piece that's that's really workable. And Not too much material so you, like you said you just file it down by hand. And that's it, you know, and you got a really nice seam that you probably won't even see by the time you're done finishing it. Very cool. Right on. Okay, today uh, while we were doing the sheet metal, Bodhi was showing me how to, how to do some sheet metal repair, sheet metal welding. We we're using the Miller's uh, Synchrowave 210. One of the cool things about this machine is that you can plug it into 120 or 240. So, uh, you know, your big shop like this, uh, there's projects going on everywhere. You don't have to worry about having a 240 plug. Uh, if you want, you just switch out the end, you just twist it off and put in the 120 plug and you're good to go. Which is amazing to me because it's such a big machine. Yeah, you it can, you like can it. it, it's, even though it looks like a fairly large machine, uh, there's a nice cabinet here for consumable storage. Uh, it only weighs about 130 pounds, so it's Super way, light. yeah, way lighter than the old transformer-based uh, sinker waves or the other sinker waves that are transformer-based. Uh, this one's inverter-based, which also means you can plug it into 120 or 240, which is awesome in a shop like this where there's projects going on everywhere and it's a fairly, fairly large building. So and you may be limited in plug space. As exactly, well. exactly. So uh, whether it's even even if you have a smaller shop, you don't necessarily have to worry about having 240 access. Uh, you can you can plug it into 120 and you're and you're good to go. Um, it's a really easy to use machine. Um, you've got basically four settings. Um, you can plug a spool gun into it if you want to weld aluminum. Um, AC for TIG welding aluminum, DC for for TIG welding stainless and mild and chromoly, and then uh, you can stick weld it, stick weld with it as well. Um, pretty pretty foolproof. Uh, you just set it to where you want to go and you're, and you're good to go. You know what I like most about it is the chart. You yeah. flip up the door and the chart basically tells you what amperage to have it at yep. per what material, thickness of material you're using. And even if you just want to use that for a starting point, you can always you can always kind of play off that and you need a little bit more, a little bit less. That's but what it I gives use you, it for. I yeah, use exactly. it for a starting point because it's a great starting point. And then you can, you know, yeah, like, just like we were saying necessary. earlier, yeah, exactly. And uh, it also, this has uh, the ability to, to use pults. So when Bodhi was doing his, his, uh, his welds, he had the pults off all the way. So it goes from uh, zero to 50 uh, pulses per second, which is the amount of times that it, uh, that it cycles through per second. Um, the nice thing about turning the pulse on is I like going up as high as the machine will go to 50 because it doesn't give you a real noticeable uh, movement or, or large jump with, uh, with the pulse. It's, it's actually really smooth like you'd be just, nor just welding a normal bead with, with no pulse. Uh, but it still gives you the, uh, the, the ability to, to weld a nice bead with putting less heat into it, um, which is great for sheet metal, great for stainless. Um, yeah, you can even use it on thinner aluminum, stuff like that. Uh, the other thing, uh, you know, obviously amp, amp settings, it goes up to 210. Um, some people like to set it, like Bodhi likes to set it right where he's going to max out the pedal. Uh, so you can just put the pedal down and get your pedal started and then you can back off as you put more heat into it. Yeah, that's the reason I, I, I back off. It's easier for me to back off and hold it than it right is on. to hold it where I need to. So right I guess yep. I got a lazy foot. My, well, you know, it's, it's, it's everyone's preference. Personally, I like to max out the machine and then, and then uh, control the amps with the pedal because it gives you a finer amount of control uh, for what you're doing. But it's, you know, one of those things, potato, potato. Um, and then this has also the SD card uh, expandable uh, memory. So if new features come on in the future, you can just pop them in, uh, which is something I have on uh, my Dynasty 280. And uh, I was able to add the... Uh, the uh, separate uh, electrode, negative electrode positive controls for aluminum, which is wow. really nice to have. That's what amazes me is how far it's come. Yeah, yeah, the technology in the last Seriously. few years with, uh, with welding. And They're it's making it easier and easier. And, um, easier and then it's, it's also nicer because if you do like, all I do is weld, it's all I do. Uh, so I, I spend a lot of times with these machines. 
and it also gives you the ability to fine tune for specific joints, specific materials, uh, things that you know you could do in the past, but it just it makes it it makes it uh, easier nowadays. What makes it easy for me is I don't always weld right. every day, so I can go sometimes two months without welding, yep. but then all of a sudden I need to turn it on. And it's easy. And you don't to come have an hour to, to, to set up a machine. You can exactly. just look at it and be like, all right, this is what exactly. I'm doing. These are the amps. It's, and you're it's good to go. easier to retain, it's easier to come back to, and it's easier to pick it all up. Right again. on. Very cool. So now that I've shown you the basics on how to TIG weld sheet metal, right on. Uh, I'm going to show you a product that I've that's almost finished. Rad. So just so you can see, you know, what actually it turns oh, yeah. into. If you can see right here that I've replaced a, a, a patch right here. And you can see that I've done a big one right yep. here. As um, straight as can be. It, it was dented. I knocked the dents out. I hammered the dents out. I used a lot of heat. But as you can see, the final product, yeah, it's, it's really, you, you hardly even, even you see the welds. You can't feel yeah. the seams whatsoever. And this is basically just me knocking it down with a file and some sandpaper. So that's all it takes. How many, how long, how many hours do you have into that? Uh, I got about 30 to 40 hours. Wow, right yeah. on. So, you know, this customer wants this door perfect. Yeah. He doesn't want no Bondo. We're okay. going to actually show the car in bare metal. Oh, that's so right. it just depends on what you're aiming for. Yeah. You know what I mean? I probably wouldn't do it if we were just going to slap a paint job on real yeah. quick. I wouldn't take so much time. I got you. So. That looks amazing. So today we did some, uh, some sheet metal techniques. Uh, Bodie showed me some stuff that I'm hoping to put into, put into action on my, on my Buick. Um, for more information on this and... Uh, and for, other, and for other videos, go to MillerWelds.com. Uh, for more on what Bodie does, check out BodieStraw.com. And you can always find me at BrownDogWelding.com.